This is Quarter Notes with DCC. I'm Eric Taylor, Artistic Director for the Detroit Children's Choir. The Detroit Children's Choir uses the power of choral music to foster musical excellence and build an inclusive community of creative, confident, and focused youth and teens throughout Southeastern Michigan. And one of the ways that we enhance our mission is that we take an opportunity to interview singers, musicians, songwriters, conductors, composers, and musicians from all across the country to talk about their experiences and any advice that they would give to our students. And it is my thrill and pleasure to introduce an amazing guest with us here today. He is the Assistant Professor of Music at St. Olaf's College, teaching on the voice faculty. Please welcome Dr. Emery Stevens. Hello. Hello, and thank you, Maestro Taylor. Oh, it's so great to see you. How have you been? I'm doing really well. Um, it's been a <laughs> it's been a hell of a year. How's it? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, yes. Twenty twenty life. <laughs> the twenty twenty life. It's been really so sort of tough, and so, but at the same point, you know, people have been sort of resilient and creative, and. Um, and really forthright in a lot of what well, music making now, being intentional about our purpose. So, yes, yes. very much so. Um, and so uh, for our students who don't know, you are at St. Olaf College uh, in Minnesota. What is it like being at St. Olaf? What's the school like? How have things been going over there? Well, it's been great. This is my second year. Uh, of course, first year was like, I was just in awe. I mean, um, to the point of when you're walking through the halls in the uh, Christiansen uh, School of the, the Music uh, Building, you hear from instrumentalists to uh, you hear voice studios. So I'm in a row of voice studios. So just walking down the hall, you'll hear all these students performing. And then if you walk through some of the other spaces, the rehearsal spaces, You'll hear the band rehearsing, you'll hear the orchestra, you'll hear the Philharmonica or, or, or orchestra as well. And then you hear all the choirs uh, performing in a different spaces. And um, I was fortunate in my first year to be able to take in the Christian, uh, the Christmas Fest, which is yes. a huge undertaking, hundreds of performers, student performers on stage. And um, they were rehearsed uh, really outside the recital hall is right across the balcony It's usually open the balcony door and so i could be in my studio have my my door open and hear this glorious music so i always i always say i'm in heaven yes <laughs> i'm in heaven um and a musical sort of vibrant uh program um students have uh, sort of really um invested in music making and in really in integrated communities um, yes. and from different different perspectives different people coming in from different uh, vantage points meaning so some students are coming from really robust high school programs and some uh, not so much but when they come together they're making this wonderful music uh, which brings joy to my heart Absolutely. And for those who, um, you know, for our students who are watching, um, St. Olaf choirs are phenomenal. Like you want to talk about, you know, we always talk about in choirs, like how a sound pops and how a sound just really is so vibrant and beautiful. It's an amazing sound. And I would encourage, you know, my little plug in for St. Olaf's, uh, just, you know, take a chance to kind of like listen, like on whatever music streaming service you use or anything of that sort. It's beautiful to listen to. And um, definitely a very distinct sound. It's really amazing. Absolutely. And a long history uh, of sort of music making. Um, I know most people don't know uh, Anton Armstrong. Is, he was just celebrating his 30th year. Uh, wow. And he was a student at St. Olaf. And he's a major conducting giant. <laughs> yes. Uh, and ACDA and, and all throughout uh, the globe. Um, and so the, 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 his choir, the St. Olaf Choir, is like the ambassador uh, group, uh, one of them, because we have also the orchestra and band program, which, I mean, they have like about 90 or so uh, members, huge ensembles. Um, we've had to pare them down this year in terms of pandemics and rehearse them in sections, the same thing with all the choirs. Um, so that's right. been a really different year. But my first year was just, just so 
everything was happening. And then the second year now we're starting in the fall and we've had to sort of pare down things for uh, health reasons. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so since we are like interviewing in 2020, obviously the pandemic's going on and everything of that sort, like I'm always curious about um, like how, like how things, like you serve on the voice faculty. So you're working with students and all that. How is that going so far? And like, have you been able to work with students virtually or coming in or how has that been going? Good, actually, um, overall going well. <laughs> uh, we had so many discussions uh, during the uh, almost like spring because we were moved last uh, uh, in March to uh, we sent all the students home because of the pandemic. And so oh. when we came back in the fall, there was several planning meetings for the entire college mm -hmm. faculty. Um, in addition to the music faculty of how are we gonna do these, since I teach one-on-one, -on -one, but also the group, you know, how are we gonna do group uh, uh, sort of rehearsals? So, court, you know, music rehearsals, as well as these one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching. Um, so I've decided, and the voice faculty sort of, we all sort of decided that we would do a hybrid. So the students get an in-person lesson one week followed by an online and vice versa in in person online so oh, it goes wow. back and forth um and you know we've actually been sort of leaning a lot on technology and learning more about technology i must say that I was a very uh novice around all of the technology i mean i use my email and and facebook you know and youtube right right but you all... and me both right <laughs> <laughs> The audio is like kind of, you know, of course, uh, when students are going through registration changes, you know, and you're on the digital platform, uh, if you don't have a good sort of sound source, even a, a professional microphone, uh, camcorder, if you're not using like clean feed, which is like an audio really enhancer to take the lag time out, uh, ah, okay. it, it becomes very frustrating. But my students have been really resilient, meaning that so they've been patient. Uh, the first couple of times we started, you know, having make sure the internet is working. We had so many people on internet and on campus that sometimes we had slow internet service on campus. So that affected the voice lessons. But I decided, okay, these are the things I would like to do in the in-person lessons. You know, when we're working on sort of body and alignment, uh, we're working on sort of um, a singing actor, so making sure the students have an opportunity to talk mm -hmm. about interpretation. And ah, then, like an yeah, opera. Exactly, yeah. it, right. And then uh, for the online is where I can sort of, okay, let's go through the diction of this piece. Let's just speak that. So sometimes we do a little blended on the online, some singing, but it's more about talking about the interpretation. We're going through sort of what's the style like? And then we address questions or how was your week of practicing? What, what are some of the things that were going well? And what are some of the things that you would like to sort of work on this week? So it was oh, a okay. time for us to reflect on what we've done and where we would like to go for the next part. That's the, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so in the Detroit Children's Choir, we started doing voice lessons as oh, a result. Great. And it's kind of like that same realm where we're, we're dealing with the, the latency, the lag, but you know we're all very resilient we're having a good time uh, and uh the puns and dad jokes are just as bad so uh <laughs> so there you go yeah. um but oh my gosh but that's just so great opera life uh for those who have not heard um dr emery stevens sing wow what a beautiful singer i mean i'm just so amazed at everything you do and you're an amazing teacher um we were talking a little bit before we hit record where I came in one day, I'm like, hey, Dr. Stevens, I need some help with this Bach piece. Can you help me? And he just gave up his time to help me out. And I left better than I ever sounded in my life. So um, it's, it's just amazing to, you know, to talk to you and hear you. And it's just been amazing. So my, thank my you. pleasure. And I'm so excited about your journey, too. You know, oh. I, uh, we met at uh, Wayne State while I was teaching there. And um, Eric was a student there. And I got your graduate degree there as well in choral conducting. And now look at him just running the world, or run the world as Beyonce's. <laughs> <laughs> there 
There you go. I love it. <laughs> and Thank I've actually, so and I've actually been able to see some of you work with the Detroit Children's Choir as well. Um, I think it's 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 great work for so many uh, students, um, and you really touch them because you bring in music that connects them and builds a sense of community and trust, you know, you. And, and, and sort of gives them sort of a, a self-awareness of yes. their power in the world. You know, and I, it's, choir life is all about, you know, that, that sense of coming together, that sense of community, but it's also about love. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about yes. recognizing that you do bring something important to this world, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, whether it's, you know, teaching on a voice, whether it's singing or teaching voice and being in a choir, it's, it's, it's all about just giving, you know, they say that the hearts all beat as one when we're all singing together. It's, yes. it's amazing. It's, it's yes. anatomic and physical. It's just amazing. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. It really means a lot. Yes. Oh my gosh. But, um, so as you know, things have just been, you know, going on, you know, you've had this amazing career of music. Um, what inspired you to go into music as a career? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there were so many factors um, that inspired me. I went to a small, um, I grew up in sort of uh, Dorchester, which was a part of Boston, sort of neighborhood of Boston. And I sort of had my early sort of um, introduction to music through uh, church. And it was, a, it was a Pentecostal church, Church of God in Christ. And we're like lots of energy and music was so key. I mean, if you didn't have music in your service, then it was not a service. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, giving all props to all the preachers and the yes, ministers. Yes. <laughs> but without that body of music being there, people needed that. Uh, to 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 come together to worship, you know. So I that was my first entree. And, you know, I loved it. Um, and I thought, well, maybe, you know, I, I may do something with it, but I never thought about it. But I think what really inspired me, I was in children's choir at church. Yep. Nice. Children's choir at a, a, a Baptist church in Roxbury. Uh, it was 12th Baptist Church. And um, it had a, a unique history. It was, it was a historical church. Um, Martin Luther King was uh, also a speaker there many years wow. ago when he was in Boston at Boston yep. University. And uh, his future wife, of course, at that time was Coretta Scott King as she was at New England Conservatory. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I knew about that history at that church, but that children's choir director, her name was, oh my gosh, um, Clara Jenkins. Wow. And she was no nonsense children's choir director. You know, you had to behave. You couldn't be looking around or acting up. She would, you know, she would she would set you straight <laughs> in the last <laughs> of the rehearsal. But she gave me my first little solos in the children's choir and I started playing flute in middle school, so she would always want me to do like these obligados uh oh nice <laughs> sections. <laughs> For, for the choir, and then I got involved with bell ringers. It was almost like music was sort of pulling me in further and further. I started with the youth choir there. I started playing, uh, singing with them, and then we had an adult choir uh, where they did all the spiritual arrangements and the big anthems. Yes. And so I was like in my sort of element, and then I had this opportunity um, I think what's really sort of inspired me as a, a flute player, uh, I went to uh, called the Days in the Arts program. And it's a, a program, a summer program uh, at Tanglewood, the summer home of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And I remember going there and I was, of course it was in a, it was rural. I was coming from a city urban life and you know, where there was like maybe one or two street lights at night and we were staying in these cabins. So I was like, yeah. where are we? <laughs> <laughs> nice. But we sat in at all these amazing uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra um, rehearsals for their concerts. We were able to attend. 
were able to go to these uh, master classes. I remember, um, you know, getting that when I was growing up. You know, BSO was pretty not as diverse. Let's say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember one African American harpist and um, Ann Hobson pilot, and she, okay. I think she was the yeah I think she was the first African American in terms of playing the harp. Wow. The okay. Yeah, and it was just really inspired me. I said, well, I guess if she can do this type of music, perhaps I can, because I also thought you know I grew up sort of you know with sort of R and B and. Uh, gospel and jazz, uh huh, uh, yep. town. I really didn't have a lot of exposure with classical music, so I, I never thought my voice or who I am would ever fit that mold. Right. You know. Right. I thought, well, I didn't. I didn't have lessons at five or six. You know. <laughs> you right. You know. Right. And I don't know anything really about these composers who are, you know, who are supposed to be the great composers of the classical canon. And I would just came in with like sort of, well, where do I fit in all this? But when I saw Ann Hobson Pilot, and they had a couple, I think um, Leontine Price came to do a recital. And I right. got to go backstage and meet her. Wow. Jessie oh my Norman gosh. Came. Wow. I got a chance to go backstage and meet her as well. So right. that opened my whole concept of, well, yes, music is music. And I can actually inhabit this space and also sing the classical canon wow. as well. Wow. So that's, that's kind of what, you know, kind of my trajectory into sort of classical music and, and opera uh, came in there as well when I started, you know, studying formally. Yeah. Wow. Wow. When, yeah. Did, when did you officially, like, you know, jump in and kind of following up? When did you start, you know, you've had this inspiration. When did you start? singing classically and like taking lessons for that i it was my first uh year in college i went to a small liberal arts uh college north of boston and uh, i started out as a political science major oh wow <laughs> i was i was taking piano lessons i was taking um, some voice lessons and this one voice teacher uh, my first semester there she said you're not a music major. I said, no, I don't, I don't plan to be a music major because, you know, I don't know what I can do with music as a career choice. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking like, I, I need to pay these loans off when I graduate. So right, I need some right. steady income. And I didn't know music performance or teaching would even, you know, be a part of my life. But she encouraged me at first semester. She said, well, you have a gift. I just want to let you know you have a gift and I think this gift needs to be nurtured and if you're willing to sort of become a music major I think this is going to be a good step for you so I I sat with that because I was like well I'm you know I like political science too and you know but once I started doing more lessons with Miss Whitaker uh, at in the college um, and she kept on sort of just feeding me with positivity. Um, and I thought, I started now to believe that I actually could do this. Because before it was like, oh, I have the, ex yeah, I sort of have a little bit of sort of, I put my, you know, toe in the water, you know, right. and this, this feels pretty good, but I never felt like I could actually inhabit the space. Right. I mean, yeah. and, and I hope that our um, Detroit Children's Choir students are really listening to this too, because it, it just shows like we've we've been interviewing several different artists and musicians and you know um, we've noticed like common threads we're, you know, like you know in musical families and all that you know this is a case you know you are such an amazing musician like just to hear like you know first year college you know changing majors and all that you know sometimes you know i'm talking to some of our students and they all have different ideas of what they want to do for college and all that it's like music if you love it and you can do it and you can you know go for it you know it's kind of like what's the old yolo you only YOLO. live once <laughs> yes yes you only live once <laughs> you only live once and you can always again this is one of the beauties uh the beauties of teaching in st olaf because it's a liberal arts college and 
but it's a large percentage. I think no, if I can get this right, but don't quote me. But there's a large no percentage worries. of students who are not majors in music, but there's like a third of the campus or something like that that are participating in music. They're not majors, wow. but they're in a number of uh, music organizations, performing organizations. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's almost like, it's one of the uh, attractive things of going to liberal arts college, especially St. Olaf, um, is that you get a chance to, you know, become an economics major, but you're getting as much sort of um, experience as a musician and there's no pressure to be a music major you can take music classes and electives and things like that but you still have music as your core you know right so you can still develop both equally and then some people decide oh i'm a political science major but you know i'm going to still probably do that but i'm going to declare music as a double major ah yes you know? that's true yeah so if you want more sort of like um more information, uh, more sort of uh, gravitas in sort of what you want to do, you may want to sort of like, you know, decide on becoming a, uh, do a double major. Right, that's also yeah. true. That's, that's definitely an option to students as well. You, like, you hear about major and minor, like when you go into education, they always suggest a minor yes. in, in addition to your major study, but there's also the possibility of a double major as well. Yeah. Like yeah. You love them both, go for it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh man. Um, well, as um, you know, I mean, this this has just been so amazing. You know, um, we have many students that are going to be watching these videos. So obviously, oh, awesome. our yeah. So it's going to be our Detroit Children's Choir students in the Civic Program. We send this to our in-school programs so that they can watch. And then you know, this is because it's on Facebook. I always like to say, random people looking on the internet. Uh -huh. uh, it's like, <laughs> hi, if you're joining us, random person, right? Uh, you know. Do you have, um, just as, we, as to kind of close out this interview, you know, do you have any advice that you can give to any of our students that are watching? You know, they're currently studying music, they're learning about sight reading, they're doing the hand signs, mm -hmm. they're, they're going through the process and singing. Do you have any advice that you'd like to give to them as they're continuing their studies? Well, I think I would say, you know, I, and going back to the time when I sort of was, you know, in the children's choir, is to take everything in because you never know you know i didn't really like this you know practice piano you know but i'm glad i continue to do that because now i can play for myself if i need to i played for choirs for church choirs and i also can play for my students but if i had listened to my other voice that said I don't want to practice. I want to go outside. I want to play with my friends. I want to be on Facebook or whatever it is. You know, I, one of the distractions is to take advantage of everything because you never know when you need it. And I think also another thing I would like to share um, is to keep finding your unique voice. Sometimes yes. people want to put you in a category. We love doing sort of putting people in boxes. Whatever your passion is, whatever your story, it's yours. And just let no one discourage you from your dreams, from your pursuits. You know, some people are like, well, you'll never make it. How do you know? You don't really Amen. know me. <laughs> Amen. Right. Because you have teachers sometimes, well, I've heard this, you know, might say to a student, and they may not be focused or motivated for a period of time, and they'll say, well, you're never gonna make it, mm. right? Yeah, that's it's like not well, good. yeah, and you don't know what a student is do uh, dealing with. So you talk about the whole child, right? Yep, a really holistic approach is that as 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 musicians, right? Especially as singers, our body is our instrument. Yeah. And so everything around us that affects us you know, physically, emotionally, you know, spiritually, whatever. It's a part of our sort of our, our voice, right? So if you're right. stressed out, your voice is going to be stressed out. Right. <laughs> if you've gotten two hours of sleep, your voice is going to sound like you've got two hours of yep. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so taking care of your instruments, your vessels, you know, 
protecting that and really holding that as in a, in a sacred space. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. what's so true, so true, just with everything, you know, you know, your, your voice, there's you, you have two sets of hands, you have two eyes, you know, two nostrils, but you have one voice. Use yes. It. Yes, so. absolutely. And even now, even more than ever, right? Across our country, I think music is that social justice. Yes. You know, speaking oh. truth to power. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Doc, Dr. Stevens, you are world class. Thank you oh. so much for taking time to share your wisdom with us today. This has just been so amazing to hear for you. And the next time I'm in Minnesota, I'm going to go visit St. Olaf's and say hi. Please, so, please yes. come forth. <laughs> and, yes. maybe, and maybe we'll send some folks out. There's a, a new uh, uh, tenure track professor, uh, Tesfa, um, and I'm sure he would love to come to Detroit and work with you guys as well. Yes, please, that would be <laughs> awesome. You know, we, we need we need all the wisdom and all the uh, amazingness and come, come visit Detroit soon, that'd be great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First we gotta get through this pandemic and then we'll- Right, uh, yeah. then we'll talk then. <laughs> right, absolutely. Oh my gosh, thank you, Dr. Stevens. Uh, You're welcome, and, it's been a pleasure. Uh, my oh my gosh. Thank you. And with that, and on that note, uh, this has been Quarter Notes with DCC. I'm Eric Taylor. Have a great day.